Our next speaker is Jackie Lynn. Yeah, Jackie. Thank you. <laughs> Can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Let me just start out by saying that there's never been a time in Canadian history since European contact that First Nations women have not been sexually exploited in prostitution. And what I propose to you today is that present day prostitution of First Nations women is a particularly sexual and violent legacy of colonization. Now there are two essential ideas that we need to know in order to understand how prostitution works. Firstly, prostitution requires a devalued class of women. And secondly, Colonization, through its powerfully oppressive and interlocking forces, subjugated First Nations women and produced such a class. First Nations women prostituted, First Nations prostituted women form part of a highly organized sex economy that exploits millions of indigenous women globally. And this group represents the most disenfranchised group of women in the world. So women have described to me what men do to them as bought and sold acts of rape. The bought rape of prostitution is not just one rape as in stranger or date rape. Prostitution is continuous rape by multiple strangers, day in, day out, year after year. For a moment, I'd like you to imagine that you are a woman, and for some of you in the audience that might be a stretch. But I would like you to imagine that you're a woman who is being used in prostitution. And every time a man buys your body to masturbate in, he has pornographic vignettes running inside his head. And he reenacts these vignettes on your bought body. And while he masturbates in you, he tells you that you are a dirty whore or a nasty skank. Believe me, verbal assault is a taken for granted part of the prostitution exchange. And he tells you that fucking and sucking are really all that you're good for. Remember, to him, you are nothing more than a sexualized collection of body parts. What this means is that you have to spread your legs you have to open your arms, you have to open your mouth, and you have to seemingly invite and embrace this continuous onslaught of assaults. This is the so-called work of prostitution. It demeans, it humiliates, and it devastates women who are used in this way. I want you to know that no matter where prostitution takes place, whether it's on our streets, whether it's in decriminalized prostitution zones, the internet, strip clubs, brothels, I don't care if a woman's prostituted from reserve to city or across international borders, the woman is still being bought and the woman is still being sold. And the process whereby a prostituted woman comes to view herself as merchandise is the worst form of dehumanization imaginable. But there is hope. In countries such as Sweden, Norway, and now Iceland, prostitution is officially acknowledged as a form of male violence against women and children. I'm going to say that again, if you don't mind. I'm going to say it again. In Sweden, Norway, and Iceland, and other countries are now considering this, prostitution is officially acknowledged as a form of male violence against women and children. And one cornerstone, one cornerstone of these Nordic policies is its focus on prostitution's root cause. The recognition that without men's demand for and use of women and girls for sexual exploitation, the global prostitution industry would dry up. Shucks, huh? Yeah. This model penalizes men who exploit women sexually and penalizes men who profit from the exploitation. What it does not do, it does not penalize women who are prostituted 
because these governments recognize it's not reasonable to punish a person who sells a sexual service. It's not reasonable. Nordic law reads, in the majority of cases, at least, this person is a weaker party who is exploited by those who want only to satisfy their sexual drives. This Nordic model defends the principles of legal, political, economic, and social equality for women and girls because it rejects the notion that women and girls, mostly girls, are commodities that need to be bought and sold and sexually exploited by men. For those of you in the audience tonight, or for those of you viewing this discussion at home, imagine, if you will, that it is your daughter, your sister, your wife, your mother, your grandmother, or any other female relative or friend who is being bought for the purpose of providing sexual relief to a stranger, and that she is being used up to 20 times a day. Isn't the very thought of it repelling and repugnant to you? Isn't it too painful to imagine? Wouldn't you do anything within your power to intervene immediately to stop it? First Nations prostituted women I have spoken to voiced several needs in terms of making their lives safer and better. One of their first and foremost needs is to leave prostitution. This is true of Indigenous women globally. Women want out. Women have also said there are virtually no programs or services that can help them do so. Former Swedish Minister of Gender Equality, Margareta Winberg, asked, shall we accept the fact that certain women and children, primarily girls, often those who are most economically and ethnically marginalized are treated as a lower class whose purpose is to serve men sexually? The Aboriginal Women's Action Network demands Canada put a stop to the male sexual demand of our girls and our women. Give us what we want. We want the right to live healthy, normal lives, free from sexual predation, free from physical assault. Give us safe space and affordable housing. Give us education and a decent living wage. Give us back our children. Give us back what you have stolen from us, our dignity, our respect, and our humanity. Thank you. Our next speaker, our next speaker from UBC Law is Annabelle Webb.